Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Halos in the Infield. The Lone Star Halo, Fernando, joined by Rob here, one of our favorites on Halos in the Infield, here to talk a little bit about game one of the Padre series. Sorry, we were a little late posting about that. We're also going to talk a little bit about potential trade pieces for our Angels. All that and more coming up next. Hey, 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 you are now listening or watching the Halos in the Infield podcast sponsored in part by Noble L Works over on 1621 South Sinclair where you can get discounts by just mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the Infield, drink discounts on us, baby. And also by 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets. The price you see is the price you get, and you also get 10% additionally off in the apply now code once you order your tickets just by mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the Infield. Now enjoy the show. In the All right, Rob, thanks for sitting through all that long introduction. That's just a badass <laughs> intro, man. That's, I mean, that's great. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love that. Randy did a real good job with it. I was, I was very, very uh, appreciative. Oh, Randy did it? Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he, he made the AI song and, uh, yeah, he, he did the video for it. So, uh, that, once again, my appreciations to, uh, Fast Times Under the Halo. Uh, so brought Rob on. We are very appreciative to have Rob on as always. Your family's been frequenting the big A lately. We have, man. So my son, um, he loves uh Zach Neto. Um, he loves Mickey Moniak, and he actually really loves Ben Joyce. So he had some cool okay. interactions with those guys. He knows the names. Um we had a little meltdown last week when I told him Otani wasn't an angel. He knew it. Yeah. But then he forgot, he kept asking where he was at. So a little of a meltdown there at the Kitmore concert going on but uh other than that it's uh you got you want to do what your, what your kids want to do right you want to keep them happy and unfortunately he still wants to go to these games and we yeah arguing with a three-year-old's not the best but you know <laughs> yeah it, you know it, once once you're a family man for anyone who might not have a family yet uh you're always kind of on on the losing side of it when you're when you know when, when you're a husband or you know sometimes a wife you're always on the losing side so that's, that's part of being a parent and part of having a, a spouse but, uh, you know, yeah. these, these are good battles to lose. There, there are certainly yeah. worse battles to lose. But, um, yeah, I get it. Well, hey, you know what? I, I, I've kind of always been on the camp of there's no bad day at a baseball game. Because, once again, mm -hmm. uptown problems, right? Here we are complaining mm -hmm. about a game that our podcast has a platform to talk about. Baseball is just a beautiful game. I love going out to a stadium. And if the alternative is not being at the stadium, I'd much rather be there watching the Angels lose. I mean, I'm sorry. I would. Yeah. And I prefer my kid wanting to go to a baseball game, a ball game, than being on an iPad or watching TV. So there you go. it's exactly. a win-win for me overall. Exactly. Hey, would you rather be watching a winning team? I mean, hey, of course. Of course. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right? But, um, yeah, it's nothing's worse than spending your hard-earned money knowing the team's going to lose. But whatever. That's I, I digress. I digress. Yeah. So – I want to talk a little bit about game one. Did you watch much of the game yesterday? I actually did. I watched a pretty good portion of it. Okay, yeah. I watched up until about the sixth inning. Uh, and I had to wake up at like 5.30 in the morning. So, I mean, yeah, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep. So, I woke up, saw that we won, uh, and, and I loved it. And I watched the highlights, um, maybe on my way to work while driving. Um, it's legal cars. in Texas. Self-driving cars, Okay. <laughs> The future is here. <laughs> um, so with that being said, um, I love the way we won the game. Small ball. Small mm -hmm. ball won the game, right? Willie Calhoun, nice ball up the middle. We had a uh, two sacrifice flies that led to a run, right? Uh, Guillermo ended up getting what was the game winner. Who saw that coming? Who, who had that? I did not. I did not. Well, I mean, what was the alternative? Uh, you know, letting Kyron Paris in there. I don't know if you saw the question of the day, but it had to do with Kyron Paris. It seems like the bulk of our audience is okay with him. 
continuing to get the nod at second base because they're kind of like, well, there's nothing to lose. Where are you on the Kyron Paris trade? You, you didn't see my uh, comment there? We could find someone better at Home Depot. That's funny. Yeah. In the bargain yeah, I, bin there at Walmart at the, uh, <laughs> the DVD. Yeah, I mean, I like Kyron Paris. I mean, just like you guys have alluded to, you said it, Todd said it, these guys are up too early, right? We have no depth. There's no one really to go to. Stefana, for some reason, he must have pissed in uh, somebody's Cheerios because they don't want him up here. I don't yeah. understand. And he's, and he's a, a great hitter. Option. He is. And he's a veteran. He needs – the work that he's getting down in AAA is what actually Paris needs yep. now. So it's kind of, I don't want to see us do a type of re merge type move like we're doing now. Bring a guy up too early, rely on him too much, doesn't get that developmental stage, and you're sending him back down for no reason. He doesn't know what he did wrong. But we did it to Joe Adele. I mean, Stefan is just a guy right now, in my opinion, to bring up. And all systems go. But when Snow comes back, too, so I see they don't want to waste stuff. What are we doing? Saving the playoffs? I mean, <laughs> honestly, we need to make moves now to help this team. But it's, just, it's a tough one for me, for him, because I, I do like him defensively. I think he's really good defensively. He is added speed. He's a good bench role player, but not a starting guy. Yeah, that's where I am on Kyron Paris. I believe the guy might be a serviceable bench piece. But in my opinion, the organization sees him as a potential Sean Figgins. Right? That's kind of what Sean yeah, Figgins is. No, right. You yeah. know, a, a speedster – a guy who originally just started playing middle infield. I think by the time Sean Figgins was, was done with the angels, he had played, you know, almost every position on the field, right? He was yeah. kind of a plug and play guy. And that's fine. That's something that I think a good major leaguer develops with time, right? A young properly developed major leaguer oh, yeah. will have the ability to play, you know, a lot of positions. I mean, look at Luis Renjifo. Luis Renjifo, in my opinion, is a sir is a very, very elite bench piece. And potentially a bubble starter. But if he's a guy who you have sharpied on your roster to start, that's where I think a guy like Luis Renjifo gets, you know, maybe you're asking for too much out of that guy. And I know that's so? a popular opinion. It's a bit, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not going to agree with that one there. I think. And you know what? And that's okay. And that's okay. Agree to disagree. But and piece. see, and I think like, that's what the angels are hoping that a guy like Kyron Paris could be right. They're kind of hoping that's the ceiling, you know, and they're very similar players. Luis Rangifo yeah. has the ability to have some power, but at the end of the day, he is a he is a hitter. Luis Rangifo yeah. can spray the ball to multiple directions. We've seen him go opposite field, um, and he's very good at that. You know, he plays solid defense. He's also not a, a liability on the base pass. So, yeah. like, if that's kind of where Kyron Paris's ceiling is, he's also batting you know, what, 120 right now? And that's clearly the floor. I mean, it can't get much worse. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a tough situation. Do you continue to give him the at-bats? Do you take away at-bats from guys like Drury when Drury comes back? Because you probably can't trade Drury like maybe we were hoping because he's a rental at the end of the day. So I think a mm-hmm. lot of us were like, hey, we're going to trade him at the deadline. You know? Yeah. Just like we are. still gone. You think so? Yeah, I mean, you have, like, remember Ian Kinsler when we had Ian Kinsler for that short period of time? Or well, Danny he wasn't Espinoza. hurt. Neither of them were injured. You, you take him out of an Angels organization, give him the proper help and treatment and everything, I think a lot of these guys fare a lot better. I mean, look at Albert Pujols. Listen, we thought listen. he was damaged goods. Oh, he's hurt. Goes to the Dodgers. Hey, I don't know why we always end up talking about this. I always say they have the top facilities, top everything. But he goes there, revitalizes his career again. A-hole says he falls in love with the game all over again. Does well there. Goes back to St. Louis. Does pretty decent there, too. It's just we don't have the systems in place. We don't have the right things to help these guys. I I think the thing is juice baseballs help a lot of people fall back in love with the game again. But I digress. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I digress. It's funny how how when there's like a milestone that's going to knock out Alex Rodriguez, all of a sudden he starts hitting home runs. You go, okay, Major League Baseball. We know. Yeah, we see what's you're happening. Right. So, um, so yeah, you know, the Kyron Paris thing is definitely something to monitor. But the other thing that that I really wanted to ask you about, and that we really need to monitor here in Angels Land, is if this organization was intelligent, they would be true sellers at the trade deadline. I think most true committed Angels fans agree that this team needs to fully sail at the mm-hmm. deadline. Do you agree with that? 
A hundred percent. Our golden piece right now is Tyler Anderson. There's teams out there who need starting pitching. This guy's executing with some subpar defense at times uh, with a lack of hitting. He has to go out there and have shut down innings time and time again. He, and he comes out and proves it. He did that last night for us, right? He comes out and he shoved it. Yep. He did it against the Yankees. He struggled at first. Thank God that uh, Soto doesn't know the infield fly rule and get out of the way. That helped <laughs> him out. But after that, he settled back down. And you put him on a good team. You put him back with a uh, Phillies, you put him with the Yankees or something like that, but Dodgers organization, he's going to flourish. He's going to be good again. And he's good now. I mean, honestly, his numbers, some of the best in the league. So it, okay. It's hard to say. And, and, and I, I completely agree with everything you said. I think Tyler Anderson is definitely going to be the Angels' best piece with a year and a half left of control. And I would say a very team-friendly contract with where he's pitching right now. I mean, $13.3 million dollars. You're not going to get yeah. that kind of production out of a guy with a sub 2.5 ERA. No. So, um, you know, I think you can probably get about two or three pretty good prospects. I think you might be able to get a, you know, top 10 in an organization, maybe, you know, not in baseball, but mm -hmm. um, especially if you're going to a team that has a very loaded uh, farm system. I think a team to look for is, is the Padres. Joe Musgrove might be out the rest of the season. Um Drew Darvish is out for, you know, at least the next 10 days, if not longer. So that, and, and even then, let's just say those two guys end up coming healthy for a playoff push for the Padres. You know, yeah. they still have about one or two guys to replace. You know, they have a guy today making the, his major league debut. So with that being said, you know, they have a hole to fill and, you know, $13.3 million isn't much to take on for a payroll. And they have the, I think, sixth best farm system in baseball. That's a team you look towards. You already said yeah. the Yankees. You, you, and they're a team who is trying to be a World Series favorite, right? And this is this yeah. team right now. The Yankees have arguably the best they've had since they won the World Series. Oh yeah, I mean, you have, you have to look for teams that have a small window. The teams that yes. have the windows right now, in my opinion, it's the Phillies, it's the Yankees, it's the Padres. Padres are probably one of the best points. Because what are the Yankees trying to do? They're trying to win now to show Juan Soto, hey, you want to win? You're going to stay here and be that yeah. guy for us. We're going to win. We're, com we're committed to winning. It's time to make a contract. The Padres have the smallest window out of everybody right now. And I yeah, think this it, guy it at closing quick. And I don't even think it's a yeah. World Series window, but they're trying to make the playoffs, you know, for the next, you know, two or three years. Because they think Preller most likely is a – Yeah, yeah. Um, another team to look for, the Giants. They have a pretty good farm system. And, you know, I know their big signing, uh, I, I forgot his name, their, you know, their big shot Korean outfielder, uh, was okay. having a pretty solid, you know, first month of the season before he went down. And right now the Giants are getting hot also. So that's another team to look for. Tyler Anderson could fit in there. Um, yeah. So, yeah. The, um, Tyler Anderson, we both agree that's the piece we need to trade. So at least the first one you should be taking phone calls on. Is there no time like the present, or is that a guy we hold on to till a little close to the trade deadline? And the reason why I say that, he's most likely where we currently stand today. If this was the all-star break, I think he's the Angels representative. So with that being said, if he does make the all-star team, does that boost up the value just a little bit? Because now you can say, hey, this guy had a horrible 2023. He's an all-star now. I'm trying to not think logically because the Angels don't do that. Logically, you're right. It's <laughs> correct. You trade him after he makes it, ups his value. But the Angels look at it this way. We're not going to trade him this year. We'll trade him next year since we have him for another year and a half. Why, on a huge deal, why get rid of him? Why get prospects and rebuild this team from scratch like we should have done years ago? But it's, um, honestly, I was, I'm always surprised GMs don't do it now. Win games now. Because when you're missing that playoff game or uh, you're, you're one or two games back come this September and you're fighting for the spot, man, if I would have made that trade for that starting pitcher earlier, and then if I'm Perry Manassi, I'm trying to shop the idea, or if he's allowed to. I still think Artie Moreno is the one Kai Bosch in this. But anyways, you shop it now. I'm like, hey, you don't only get him for two months of the season. I'm going to give him to you for three, three and a half. So yeah. he's going to get those three or four extra starts in there. He's going to help you out, and that's going to boost your team. It's going to give you guys a little boat of confidence. And go ahead and give us these rookies and prospects that you have, and we'll make this trade happen. I mean, look at the Miami Marlins did. They made that happen like that with the Padres. Absolutely. I couldn't freaking believe it. But that's an organization with a clear path. Hey, we're not in it to win it anymore because we can't compete with this. Let's take our best piece that we have here, trade them away, and rebuild. I think Tyler Anderson gets dealt. And the reason for that 
is $13.3 million. I mean, at that point, we're probably talking closer to what, $8 million that you're going to be saving this year, you know, along with the 13 next year. You know, we're talking about pretty close to $20 million. I don't exactly know when they trade him, so that's why I'm saying we're somewhere in that ballpark yeah. that Artie Moreno save it. So yeah. you can probably convince him for that. But once you start talking about guys like, you know, Renhifo, who I'm sure we're about to talk about, and then guys like Ward, you know, these are guys that are, you know, still in arbitration. So I think mm-hmm. Renhifo, at least off the top of my head, is getting somewhere like in the $8 million ballpark. And then same with Ward is probably somewhere in there. I haven't looked at Ward's at all, but I think Ray Heath, I saw him, he was like in the 8 million ballpark. So yeah. it's probably going to be a lot harder to convince Artie to maybe trade a guy, those guys who have I control, agree. who could also give you a sizable return. But I, I think Anderson's a little easier. Like, hey, Artie, let's trade this guy. Because if the Angels do this right, and I'm talking about trading the top heavy pieces, we're not going to contend this year. But if you do this right, we can be talking about the Angels flirting with contention next year. And then by 2026, we're talking about a team who truly is ready to contend. Especially at that point, you can, you know, in theory, cut ties with Rendon. I think that's his last year under contract. We've seen him eat that amount of money before. Eat the money, give it to somebody else. That's Mm -hmm. why one of my biggest things on my personal checklist, get a potential number two in a rotation prospect. You know, a Griffin, a Canning type guy. You know, when Canning was drafted – People were always like, hey, he's not going to be an ace, but it'd be a number two type of guy. You know, you yeah. want to get a guy like that, okay? You want to get probably a second base prospect because that's a hole for the Angels, a giant hole. Because yeah. you have Drury this year, and after that, I mean, you maybe have Rinkifo for an additional year, but that's another piece you could potentially trade. And then the other guy is a third baseman. You have Neto, you have Shanuel. Um, after that, you have Trout and Ohapi. After that, there's really nobody else on this team. There's really nobody yeah. else in the farm system. No, I mean, you got to look at, too, the draft. I mean, that, that kid from West Virginia, that shortstop, I think he's a good second baseman. Yeah, well, too. The, the we've been linked a, a lot hitter. with him. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think it's true. I was hoping to get a pitcher, but then looking at him, and then what you say exactly right now, who do we have up the middle? We have to give Neto some help. We need a second baseman. Renhifo is not going to be here that much longer. Um, I would say too, you're right. I don't think we're contenders next year. We're going to come, we're going to have a rough two years. And then after this year, you get rid of the right guys. Honestly, too, Hunter Strickland, we need to make him our closer because we need to up his value. And if that, if he comes in the ninth inning and shuts teams down, he's only going to up his value more and more and more because guys need those late inning pitchers. Okay. So in your opinion, Demota Steves right now? Um, no one's going to take him as closer. Yeah. He, I mean, come on. He's throwing 95 to 98 miles per hour. You're not blowing people away anymore because these hitters are hitting that. They're seeing a consistent basis. His breaking ball's crap. His, everything's up in the zone. He's but I do it. think that we could get something for Estevez if you do it right. And I'm not talking about a lot. I'm saying you can get a lower, you know, reliever in the bullpen type of prospect, you know, 25 to 30 in an organization. I think you get a piece like that. I mean, look at the Kinsler trade. We got Ty Butcher yeah. for that. You know what I yeah. mean? So something like that. And Buttry was was a serviceable piece for three years. Yeah. So it was a team that was desperate though, and they wanted to win now. And they had yeah. they had that small window. And that's what the teams we needed to tap. Those are the trades we need to make right there. The only reason why Estevez, you could trade him for a smaller guy, but it's most likely a guy that usually gets washed out because teams see it. He's a fraud, in my opinion. I, yeah. I like the guy as a person, don't get me wrong, but as a pitcher, struggled in Colorado, oh, it's the altitude. Struggled here at the Angels, even those, that year of the All-Star. You can look back when we were talking about it on the podcast. It was me and Randy at the time. I didn't like him. He left that ball up too much. And then he I finally remember. started getting burned little by little. I, I knew everything was just up, up, up. And you can't live up in the zone because you will live and die there at the same time. Absolutely. Um, I definitely agree with you, though. Strickland, because he's a rental for another team, he's a guy you have to move on from. You can get something for him. Um, Simber was on that list. He struggled lately. I don't know if you're going to be able to get anything for him. You might, but you, um, it's tough. People don't like the sidewinders like that. That's a, he's a yeah. really tough guy to come in. He's nice to change the pace back with, before the rules where you had to face two batters, yeah. right? Just for one batter and put him in. He would be a nice, nice little piece add on in. But other than that, I like him. I think he does well for the angels. Um, he struggles at times. Yeah. But the main piece we're going to talk, we really need to look at overall is once you make this Tyler Anderson trade and you start picking off guys one by one, you look to Mike Trout and say, Hey, you need to leave this offseason. 
Sorry, well, thank you for your service. It's going to hate Angel fans. It's going to hurt. It hurts me to even say this. I love Mike Trout. I want him I to retire an Angel and everything. But for the veteran of the franchise, already we've run this franchise straight into the ground. And yep. to, for him to be the only golden piece, and don't tell me, yeah, he's hurt. He's 32, he's 33, he's still old. Yes, but he can still contribute to a ball club. And with the right protection of the lineup around, and with the right hitting coach, you send him to Philly, and they train what, Brandon Marsh from a 220 hitter to a 300 hitter. Is Brandon Marsh a better hitter than Mike Trout? No. Sorry. Brandon Marsh is like one of the pieces. Don't get me wrong. I love Ohapi, but I would – can you imagine if we lived in a world where we would have gotten Ohapi and then we could have kept Marsh? I mean, that would have been great. I mean, because mm-hmm. Marsh would be a giant part to this offense right now. Um, he's been very – he's been good over there. But, you know, once again, you have to deal with the coaching here has been subpar mm-hmm. and lackluster compared to what it's been in Philadelphia. You know, Dave Dombrowski saw something in Brandon Marsh clearly, and, and that's what Dombrowski does. You know what I mean? Yeah. He finds those assets that people are kind of giving up on or, you know, and, and we got Mickey Moniak and we were like, hey, maybe we figure something out. Another fraud, unfortunately. I don't think he's a fraud, so I'm going to defend Mickey Moniak on this. I want okay, everyone go to ahead, look go at ahead. the Michael Brantley, YouTube Michael Brantley and his dad at batting practice. He is swinging exactly like how Michael Brantley was. He is taking a stride forward, and he is activating his hips right away. There's a video of Brantley doing his batting practice, struggling hitting. He was going through it last year, and his dad's a hitting coach. His dad's a well-known hitting coach. So all of a sudden, his dad told him to stop leaning like this and grab the shoulder and goes, turn there. And all of a sudden, Brantley did a batting practice. Then what happened? He went on a little hitting run. He went from a 250 hitter to a 285 hitter that year. I think Mickey Moniak is starting too far back. I mean, I've, I've talked about it in the chat with right, a little group chat. I don't know if you've seen the, those messages back and forth, but if, I've never seen a guy, I mean, any major league pitcher, he's always late, but he, it's not like the swing's bad. Uh, to me, just looking at it in analytics, his hands are so far back compared to everyone else. He's like wrapped around here. So he's coiled so far, and then he takes a step and he coils back even more. I'm watching that. I mean, as a former pitcher, I'm throwing that guy a fastball. Because I know that I'm going to blow it by him. I'm actually trying to go up and in on him. Because the far further back he coils back, he can't hit that inside fastball. But when he hits those home runs and those breaking ball pitches, it's because he has time to catch up. He needs to change his whole mentality, but that's where a hitting coach comes in. I'm surprised Juan Washington and these guys haven't gotten to him yet. Drive the ball. For all the young guys out there, too. Fastball. I want to drive it. I'm looking for fastball. I'm looking to drive it to left center field. If I'm early, I'm pulling the ball to right field. If I'm late, I'm still into the left field side, hopefully. I don't know why they don't trade Mickey Moniak that way, because they want the home runs, because it's all about home runs. But we don't help these guys succeed. We're not helping him. We're not helping Shanwell. We're not helping Neto. That was embarrassing, by the way, too, with Neto and Miller in Seattle with his high leg kick. Yeah. We were yeah. coaching there. Like, step in, guys. We, we need to do it. But uh, anyways, I guess, like you said, I digress on this. We need to trade guys. We need these pieces. We need them now type thing. Stop holding on. Nolan Shanwell is a piece that um... – you know, I, I look at the type of hitter he is, and he has a lot of potential. I have no problem believing that Nolan Shanuel is going to make it as a legitimate major league hitter. As long as he doesn't try to be something he's not. He is not a power guy, and he needs to continuously remember that. Because if Nolan Shanuel does it right, he's going to be consistently a 280 to 320 hitter who's going to have an on base percentage in the four hundred, you know, in the fours, if he does it the right way, the problem with him is he's swinging early and he continuously keeps driving the ball straight into the ground earlier on Twitter. I I forgot who posted it. And this was you. I'm sorry. I don't remember your name. So I can't give you credit. It wasn't me. It was seven minutes and 27 seconds of him grounding to the pitcher or the second baseman because they continuously shift him. And I was just mm-hmm. like, geez, can you imagine how much better of a hitter this guy would be if he would have had ample time to develop and would have had solid coaching at the major league level? This guy would be scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. I mean, it's – remember when uh, we were growing up being drafted by the Detroit Tigers with like a death sentence? Yeah. <laughs> when they had, right? When they had Jeff Weaver and all those guys during those yeah. years, they were losing 110 games a year. That's what we are. We're the death sentence. You're praying yeah. you don't get drafted by the Angels right now because it's like the Oakland A's. There's no development on it. There's really nothing there. And you're right. If we had the right coach and these guys, they should be developing still. Neto should be developing still. We rush these guys up and we're not getting the result. And fans get frustrated. Well, they're in the major leagues. 
Really? Go through our roster. I, they should be in the in double A still, really. Yeah. And you're right. Power, what power hitters do we have on this team? On the roster? I will say it's Mike Trout and Miguel Snow. Everybody else needs to hit for average because you're not a power hitter. Yeah. That's my I mean Pilar, that's another that talk about a trade piece. That's a guy right now you yeah. need to dump quickly because you're not playing him every day. What's the point? Yeah. Somebody would take him right now with, with where he is. You're not going to, once again, you're not going to get a giant return, but something, something for a guy like that. He's hot. Yeah. Trade him. He's great defensively. Can. Yeah. yeah I mean, can. he has, there's value to his game right now. And the Giants who just lost an outfielder, it's a very yep. valuable guy. Very Absolutely. valuable guy. So uh, a couple other guys I want to ask you about. Um, so we, we kind of went through the bullpen. Is there anyone else we miss in the bullpen who you, who you can legitimately see being moved? Matt Moore again, just because he's a lefty. Yeah, and he's been struggling a bit lately too. I know a lot of fans are disappointed with where he's at. I don't think we get him out there enough, to be honest with you. That's he's fair. barely pitching. <laughs> it's, yeah. So you pitch a guy. I, I don't think he's a, set, a setup man right now either, where we currently stand. And he should be a setup man. It, well, Strickland going. It's, I mean, honestly, I put more setup man, put Strickland as closer, and bump his step as a seventh inning role. Okay. I'm tired of seeing Dragon Ball Z BS. Don't celebrate. You're not that good, man. Yeah, you <laughs> until. <laughs> Until you uh, stop giving up runs, walks, and blown saves, stop that crap. I just want to say, go play baseball. Better yourself. Don't better the celebration. That's fair. I, I, I couldn't agree with that. Um, okay. Uh, where are you on Taylor Ward? Now, that's another guy who is a fringe all-star. I'm, I'm leading right now towards no, but there was a, you know, about two weeks ago, I was like, hey, this guy's great. He's doing well. Um, could you see an avenue where he gets traded with his amount of control that's left? I think he's got... Um, the rest of this year and next year. There's a soft spot for him in the organization. I would have traded him by now, to be honest. I mean, he brings value. We have a very crowded outfield, especially with these young guys coming up still. I mean, that's if you're keeping Moniac. We, that's the whole thing. What's the plan? Are you re-signing yeah. Adele? If the, question, if the answer is no to that one, then you got to keep Ward. Which with Mickey Moniac? Are you keeping Mickey Moniac? It all, develop, it all depends on what we're going to do there because we can't strip down this team so much to the point – that we don't have anybody to play because like how everyone's alluded to Todd has done in the post game. There's nobody else to go to in the minor league system. It's not like we have guys we can just pull up and go ready to play. We're going to, have to be calling guys like Brandon belt back out. I mean, yeah. guys aren't even playing currently. Um, so if it was me, if I'm the GM, so Tyler Anderson, I think we're all going to agree, you know, it's time to trade him for sure. Um, I'm trading Taylor Ward. And for the simple fact of, you know, I'm going to play Moniac and just write it out because I want to see this year what I have in Moniac. I'm going to ride that pony. I'm going to ride his ass like a pony as long as I can. And mm -hmm. at the end of this year, you need to know what you're doing with him. And the same thing with Joe Adele. So you need to give them all the reps you possibly can this year. And then uh, if you trade Ward, you keep Pilar because you're obviously going to get a much bigger return for Ward that you're going to get out of, uh, you know, you're going to get from Pilar. Maybe that's the kind of guy who I look to trade to, you know, the, the Giants or something. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so I now have that. And let's just say, you know, all of a sudden, like, well, what, what happens if one of those guys gets hurt? Okay, well, we saw Jordan Adams, and that's another guy who's young, and you just give him at-bats if somebody gets hurt, you know, Trout gets hurt again, Trout gets shut down, whatever the case is. You at least have that to fall back on. And if not, uh, gosh, who's the other guy who had a really good spring? Used to be on the Astros. Um, Ersnick. Yeah, right. He's still in the organization, right? In the minors. Did he decline the option? I thought he went. I don't I know think, if he is. No, I think out of spring training, he went to the minors, and I think he stayed there. If, okay. if, yeah. In my understanding. So, you know, if, if I'm right on that, then I think we're, we're okay there. Um, yeah, you know, we have a little bit of outfield depth, you know, yeah, it's not going to take the world by storm. But once again, I've said it multiple times and I have to eat my words. If we truly tear it down to that level and we really are just running a bunch of young guys or, you know, quote unquote scrubs like Willie Calhoun. So be it. I can live with it because there's a plan in place. I can live yeah. with a rebuilding team because there's a direction. You know, and at that point, we really can take our kids or just go to the game and just enjoy it for what it is, right? It's baseball. We know we're going to lose today. But you know what? Hey, Zach Neto went two for four today. One of those, we were down 3-1. It was a clutch hit. That's what we want to see. That's good for these young guys. 
Hey, Sandoval had a, had a quality start. Gave up two runs today, six innings. I'll take that. You know, once yeah. you're rebuilding like that, that's the only thing you look for. You look for these young core pieces to have good performances. Nothing else matters. Losses don't matter. Yeah. They're actually encouraged. So, um, yeah, that that's where I am as a fan. I, I want to see some of these pieces that are going to get us a return to move. Um, okay, so last guy particularly, I, I have a question about Luis Renjifo. Where are you on trading Renjifo? I know you like him, but he's another guy. His value will never be higher than it is right now. There's a lot of teams out there in need of middle infield depth, especially yeah. because he's cheap, controllable, and he can play almost every position besides like center field and catcher. And first. As an Angel fan, you're right. I don't want to trade on Heathrow. But as an organizational business person, you have to go ahead and do it. You got to get the value now. The, you're right. Value's there. He's a 300 hitter. I think that he's a perennial all-star. On really? the right team, right coach. Oh, yeah. Right team, right coach. Just, he's hitting 300 on the Angels. What protection does he have right now? There's not That's one funny. guy there protecting him. And now you put him on a team with legitimate hitters protecting him. Oh, Otani's so great, like everyone's saying right now. Yeah, he's great because if you don't pitch to him, you got to pitch to Freddie Freeman. And you don't pitch to Freddie Freeman, then you have Mookie Betts. Then you have – I mean, there's there's guy after guy after guy. And same thing with Soto. Soto is good, don't get me wrong. But they, if it's not Soto, it's Aaron Judge. And it's Stan. They have guy after guy coming in. And if your weak points – oh, Anthony Rizzo, that's my weak hitter. Really? That's really not too bad of a weak hitter to have on your team but it's – you're right. No, he ha- he has to go. But then the whole thing is we can't strip it down so much because then you're going to – instead of getting a prospect, you're going to need actual a prospect and a guy who can come in now to help you out. Cole Tucker, yeah, he can probably fill in there. But uh, I'm with you on the organization. We have to know as fans too. In baseball, there's times when you need to take a step or two back in order to take five steps forward. And we're at that point now. We probably need to take four steps back just to get five forward. But, hey – or one step further on to go on to where we need to be. But oh. I don't see it happening currently with Artie Moreno. Because like you said, you said the best. You had me laughing. Imagine if Artie Moreno didn't have unfinished business. How bad would this team be? Yeah. <laughs> How bad would this team be? Yeah, if right. he wanted to prove something and go out and win a World Series and the team we have, he still thinks he can win. And I don't know. I don't think he does. I, I think that's the thing. I, I don't really legitimately think he there's anything unfinished this year. I think this is just him paying for his sins. You know what I mean? Of not selling the team in yeah. the first place. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it, it's just really hard for me to imagine a world where Arnie Moreno is sitting back in his Arizona home thinking to himself that things are going well. Because the value of the organization, like it or not, has gone down since Otani left, right? Um, Maybe not a lot because this is still – no, it's not the Los Angeles market per se, but it's close enough that, of course, you do get revenue from the Los Angeles area, right? Mm -hmm. Orange County is a self-sustaining market. Um, You no longer have a path forward with the stadium, at least at the current minute. Um, Mm -hmm. This is a decaying stadium. This stadium, the stadium is legitimately falling apart. It is in a state of disrepair and it's only getting worse. So with that being said, the value, in my opinion, has gone down. Maybe not a lot. We're obviously still talking about a team that's worth $2.5 to $3 billion instead of a team yeah. that's, you know, three to four. So, yeah. Um, but it was okay. him. I mean, Go ahead. he's a sweetheart deal. What was he paid? I think yeah. In Google, I think he pays like a million bucks a year, maybe $2 million a year for the stadium of Anaheim. Yeah. To, no. to lease it. It's really not a bad deal. No, no, absolutely. I, I, absolutely. Okay. So in closing here, so we talked a little bit about these guys. You explained it. So just to reiterate to our audience, I'm going to name the player and you're going to say if they're going to get traded either this trade deadline, the off season, or they're not going to get traded at all. Okay. Tyler Anderson. Uh, trading now. Okay. Um, Taylor Ward. Not traded at all. Okay. Hunter Strickland. Uh, traded now. Matt Moore? Traded now if somebody takes him. Okay. Um, Estevez? Not traded. We're, we're dumb enough to keep him. 
Okay, and um, Luis Renjifo. I, I don't think Artie trades him. He really okay. should, but I don't think Artie trades him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Luis Renjifo, want. out of those guys, is the one guy who I think is – you could probably put on a Sharpie that he'll still be here post-trade deadline. Can I ask you, uh, what about Patrick Sandoval? Um, so I saw the Super Halo Bros post that one. Um, Patrick Sandoval is an interesting case. Um, a couple of days ago, I asked the question of the day, who's been the most disappointing member of the starting rotation? And the two most common answers are the obvious ones. Reed Detmers, Patrick Sandoval. I said my immediate reaction was Reed Detmers because that was the day he was demoted. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he, he showed ace potential. But I think if you really dive deep, the most disappointing member has been Patrick Sandoval. And the reason for that, he got the opening day start. And we have truly seen an ace version of Patrick Sandoval. The World mm-hmm. Baseball Classic version of Patrick Sandoval, I will you know, say this even if people call me stupid in my face, was one of the best pitchers in baseball. I understand that was for a short period of time and that was a specialized tournament. But he was facing the best players in the world and dominating. So with that being said, we know what the ceiling for Sandoval is. Say what you want about the World Baseball Classic being a dog and a pony show. But you're facing legitimate world, uh, you know, uh, Major League Baseball players and other players from, you know, um, Japan and respected leagues around the world. Mm-hmm. And he was dominating. So yeah. with that being said, I truly believe that Sandoval's does have value. Yeah. We might not see it because we're like, oh, we've seen this guy struggle. But for a young lefty, because, I mean, this guy's what, 25 years old? If no, that? He's gonna be like, no, Sandoval's going to be like 27 to uh, 28. No, there's no way. I, I need to Google he, this. He's that young? Yeah, I think so. Old, yeah. No, I, I, I think the guy old. is young. Let's see. Um, he he's born young? in 96. He's 27. Okay. So either way, he's 27. Two years, not that big difference. Yeah. So, so in theory, uh, he has, you know, two or three years of uh, control left. And realistically speaking, for most baseball players, the prime of your career is from about 28 to 32 for most guys. Obviously, you know, that that differs, but I think that's the general sweet spot that a lot of people say. So with that being said, this guy in theory hasn't quite reached the peak of what his body's capable of with proper coaching. I legitimately see an avenue where Sandoval is a number two in a rotation in any rotation in baseball. I think that's what he's capable of. I think he is a number two and a number three at worst in 25 of the major league baseball rotations out there. The only Mm -hmm. ones is maybe Texas because they have a lot of young guys who are going to start coming up now. I know they had a couple of their top prospects make major league debuts, you know, Scherzer when he comes back, I know Evaldi's back now. So maybe not in Texas, uh, probably not with the Dodgers. um, Maybe not even with the Yankees right now. Yeah. Not with the Padres. But after that, that's kind of the tier where you start to think, okay, maybe he is a potential number two, you know, with, with some of these other guys. I mean, the Royals have a pretty good number one, number two right now, if memory serves correctly. Yeah. The Giants have some potential there. And even the Diamondbacks, he's probably not good enough there because of Kelly and Jordan Montgomery. And uh, who's their other guy? Um, Keller. Keller. So, yeah, that's that's probably another team. So, you know. I, but besides so I that, think, man, I, I think he's good. Um, I didn't agree. I saw the Super Halo Bros. I don't necessarily agree. I don't think he has that much value right now. But with the right team, yes, he does. Um, the World Baseball Classic spoke a lot. But I'm almost surprised that teams aren't looking at him for a bullpen role at this point in time because he does have a nice little breaking ball, good control of the changeup at times. It gets away from him every couple of innings here and there. But if you put him in for one inning here, one inning there, I think you get a different type of pitcher. I think he's your guy for that, where he can fit into that role for now and then work his way back into a starter. We've seen him I as mean, a long ro- a long reliever before, right? Yeah, we have. That's how he came to uh, yeah. came the Angels from Boston. He's a long reliever at first, 
and he did did decent. I mean, he didn't win games because they weren't winning for him at the time. But I always wondered, hey, put him in for one inning and see what happens. If the guy pitches pretty good one inning, right, can, controls the game and everything, he gets in trouble later innings for him. Um, I just think as a reliever, it'd be interesting to see. And then Reed Detmers, I don't know if he's a disappointment or if it's the coaching. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna attack this because in the, last month he had a three ERA, was dominating baseball. This month, nine ERA. What happened between there? Scouting reports didn't change on him. There's no way. Lost command, but what? What? There's something wrong mechanically for him because that ball is up. There's times where he dominates and those pitches are great. What are the Angels not doing right now? Every other team in the organization in baseball would take him today. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, he's another guy. We've we've seen his potential. I mean, we've seen him provide ace like stuff for two, three months. I mean, remember, was it about two years ago? He after he had his no hitter, he got sent down. Mm-hmm. Buddy Carlisle worked with him and he came back and was dominant to close the year for, you know, a, yeah. a, a month and a half. And the, he only had, he was down there for what, three weeks in AAA? He only made like three yeah. starts, maybe four starts, and something clicked again. So that's what we're obviously going to hope uh, is going to happen this time. But um, I, I've said it many times on these podcasts. And if you don't believe me, listeners, I mean, hey, my words are forever if you dig deep enough. I've said that there's always guys who are interested, and by guys I mean GMs, who are going to be interested in Sandoval and Detmers because they have potential. They're lefties. There's always spots for young lefties in Major League Baseball, uh, Mm -hmm. especially with the ceilings these guys have. And they've shown amazing glimpses of, of dominance for like, you know, six, seven starts in a row. So that shows that it's not flukes if, if you know, they're, they're hot for six, seven starts. And then, you know, maybe they lose some confidence. And that's where I think Reed Debra's is right now. For whatever yeah. reason, the team just hasn't given him that confidence again. Whether that's the offense and he just, you know, he gives up two or three runs and he's like, hey, I'm not going to get back in this game. Maybe there's something mental there. But that's mm-hmm. where the pitching coach needs to work with him, right? The pitching coach, Ron Washington, these guys need to be able to take him away mentally from that game while he's pitching. And I understand that's easier said than done. You were a pitcher. You get it. But pitching, yeah. it truly is short-term memory. While you're up on the mound, you need to be able to mentally remove yourself from, hey, I'm pitching in a game, and I truly am playing catch. Or you're breaking it down pitch by pitch. It's okay, hey, I yeah. lost that at bat, no problem. It's a brand-new game, it's a brand-new at bat. It's all mental, and hitters know that. Hitters know when you're not on your game, right? I've yeah. been in batter boxes when I know the closing pitchers were at it. Because you yeah. got, when you're a hitter, you know, like they say in, in uh, Moneyball, it's a game of blackjack. With every single pitch, your hand changes. So with that being mm-hmm. said, when you're a hitter and there is a pressure cooker moment for that pitcher, you know as a hitter that you're always in control because the pitcher is always more nervous than you are. And hitters are taking advantage of Sandoval and Detmers when they're in that situation. Sandoval is very, very vocal. He is very, very emotional. And you know what? Weaver was like that too, but Weaver had it down to a science. And yes, even if he was emotional, the hitter knew that they weren't getting to him. That's just what he did yep. to relieve that. Another guy who I grew up who was just like Jerry Weaver, David Wells. David Wells was mm-hmm. very vocal. Jake Peavy, very vocal. These guys would throw hissy fits on the mound when they were yep. Yankees or, you know, Jake Peavy when he was a Cy Young winner for the Padres. These guys threw hissy fits out there. But you know what? Yeah, they, they were solid major league pitchers. And hitters mm-hmm. knew that they were never in the driver's seat with those guys. And it's that's what they just – yeah. These guys just haven't mastered that yet. And that comes with age. That comes with experience. But by now, they should have started to get it already. And they just, for whatever reason, haven't. You're right. No. It means, I like the, I'll leave it at this on that one. Have the Jared Weaver uh-huh. mentality. I don't care that the guy just in front of me just in front of you just hit a home run. You're not him. He hit the home run, not you. So I'm coming after you again. Absolutely. That's that's the mentality we need to have. The angel pitchers need to have. Okay, cool. I got got a double, but you're not that guy. So now you got to face me. I have the stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember David Wells giving up home runs and then yelling in his glove. That's what they used to call him, Boomer. You know what I mean? He'd yell in his glove, yeah. and shriek or whatever it was, and then right back yeah. at it. So that's kind of what you need to do, but. I digress. This is, I'm sure Rob and I could talk about yeah. this for hours. 
Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us. Uh, anything in closing you have for the audience? Um, you know, I think the Todd's Rally Fung's got to come back to help us get to 500. That's just my personal belief. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what this network needs. <laughs> no, no, culture. no. I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to, he's banned <clears throat> from the stadium, I'm trying to get him banned from YouTube. That's fair. Yeah. Um, he, Todd is going to be the new um, uh, Cal Dong winner every night. Oh, yes. <clears throat> it's going to be him. I get Randy on that one. See, see if he can make something for him. Absolutely. All right. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to have you back here. Uh, you know, obviously oh, you're part you. of the staff, but we love having you on here. Uh, on behalf of all of us here at Halos in the Infield, on behalf of our sponsors, betonline.ag, uh, thank you to them. Thank you to 714 Tickets, and thank you to Noble Aleworks. Have a great rest of your day, everybody, and let's go Angels.